Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer on Saturday the 12th of December. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. I'm the Senior Pastor of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church here in Northampton. Thank you for joining me today. I trust that you're well. And please bow your heads with me now as we pray together and remember God's presence with us as we turn to him in prayer. Psalm 82. God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the orphan. Maintain the right of the lowly and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk around in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I say, you are God's children of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fail like any prince. Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations belong to you. Thanks be to God for his words. Let's pray together. God of wisdom and love, giver of all good things, we thank you for your loving kindness and for your constant care over all creation. We bless you for the gift of life, for your guiding hand upon us and your sustaining love within us. We thank you for friendship and duty, for good hopes and precious memories, for the joys that cheer us and the trials that teach us to trust in you. We bless you for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour, for the living presence of your Spirit, for your Church, the Body of Christ, for the ministry of Word and Sacrament, and for all the means of grace. In our weakness you are our strength, in our darkness light, in our sorrows comfort and peace. From everlasting to everlasting you are God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, glorified for ever. Amen. Now let's continue to pray as we call to mind our weakness and our failings, our deliberate faults. And let's ask for God's grace and for his mercy. May Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading today comes from Colossians chapter 1, beginning to read at the 15th verse. Speaking of Christ, Paul writes, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Thanks be to God for his word. This is one of the great early hymns. It's actually a hymn. It's a poetry. And Paul is probably quoting something that he knows and that he now puts here into the heart of this letter to the Colossians. It's a great hymn of acclamation and it celebrates a central truth of the Christian faith that Christ is Lord over all creation and he is the reconciler between God and all creation. He is. Our lives are built on this truth. 
shaped in every way by this truth. Because now, as we are reconciled to God, as it were, Christ gives us back to God as people who are homeless, holy, blameless and irreproachable. This is the transformation that's at the heart of the Christian gospel. That God can change us by the almighty power revealed in Jesus Christ so that we might be part of God's reconciling work in all the creation. So we are strengthened to use gifts and talents for God's sake. We are strengthened to use those supernatural abilities that may come upon us for God's sake. Whatever we have, all that we are and all that we can be by God's grace is a means by which God is glorified throughout his world and that we as his people are better able to serve. Because once we were acting in wrong ways that were counterproductive, now we've been turned around. Because there's been such a change in our lives, we are a new people who can act rightly and remain steadfast in the faithful love of God and not shift in any way from the Advent hope which we celebrate at this time of year as we seek to be the Lord's useful people. May God help each one of us to be useful in his hands. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's bring our concerns for God's world, for ourselves and for those we know and love in our intercessions. Let's pray. Lord, we pray today for those who are in trouble or pain, and particularly those who continue to suffer the effects of the coronavirus, COVID-19. We continue to pray for the effective and efficient rollout of the vaccine to hospitals, to care homes, to regional distribution centres. We ask for all those involved both in logistics and in administering the vaccine that they be protected guided and guarded in these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the persecuted church today and continue to pray for Syria and thank God for the al Qasab village there where a rehabilitation uh, project uh, has recently been compl completed and 36 displaced families have been able to find new homes and support and that the church that was at the heart of the former community has been restored and the church bell has been rung after eight years of silence. We thank God for the work that's been completed and ask for his protection around that community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the relationship between the EU and the United Kingdom. And pray, Lord, that there may be a good and just outcome to the negotiations that are continuing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now in a moment of quiet, we remember ourselves and any we know and love in a moment of quietness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, with those whom you love. God's people everywhere this day and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and keep you safe and continue to pray and support for one another. And if you're able to, please pray for me. But until we meet again tomorrow, goodbye and God bless. <laughs>